welcome to our final lesson, lesson F, this is the cosine law. So the cosine law, when do we use it? Well, we only use it for two different situations. So a situation where we're given all three sides, so for example, we could have seven, eight, and three, and we were given all the sides, and they said find angle theta. So that's one instance where we can use it. So we would use this equation, there's two separate equations. You're going to notice they don't show brackets, but you need to put brackets. They don't show it because they expect you to know they belong there. So, it creates a fraction, and just like with our last equation with sine law, we had to go second sine, second answer to find angles. That's what we do with this question right here to find angle A. So, angle A would be second cos second answer and that's how we would find it on that one we would go second coast second answer now that's when we find an angle one thing that's special about the equation is if you're finding angle a the side across from him is the one that is subtracted and that side length does not show up on the bottom of the fraction okay only the b and c do now does it matter really who a and b and c and who, it, who they are, the only one that matters is the one you're finding across. So, if I have labeled, like I do here, angle theta, this guy across is his matching partner. So the three would be the one that is being subtracted. So the way I would write this would be cos theta equals brackets, seven squared. If the number is attached to him that add 8 squared, 7 squared plus 8 squared. Then we would go subtract 3 squared. Brackets. Put that down. Okay, and then we would divide by 2 times 7 times 8. Okay. Now again, they're all in brackets. So that's how we would type it in the calculator. And then again, we would go second sign, second, or sorry, second coast, second answer. Okay, back to recording. Let's take a look here, guys. We're going to type it in together exactly the same way. So I'm going to put a bracket, 7 squared plus 8 squared minus 3 squared bracket divided by, open another bracket. 2 times 7 times 8, close the bracket. Okay, that's going to give me an answer. Now I'm going to check my mode. I'm not in degree, I'm in radian. So I've changed to degree mode. Okay, so I've got my decimal answer. Now I'm going to go second coast, second answer. So second coast, second answer. Enter. We'll get 22 degrees. Okay, 22 degrees. So... Angle theta is 22 degrees. Now, the good thing about using this equation is the minute you find an opposite pair, you're now off and running and you can solve the rest of the triangle with the sine law. Okay? So the only thing we use the cosine law for is to find an unknown angle when we're given all three sides or if we're given what I call the taco situation. The taco situation here is the side angle side. So it would be a triangle that looks like this. Let, let me just draw you a picture here. I'll raise my steps. So another triangle. I might have 52 degrees here and then maybe 9 and 11 there. And they'd be finding X. So if we need to find the side length across and we don't have an opposite pair, if there's no opposite pair, that's when we have to use this method. Now, again, this is going to find us a squared. Do we want a squared? No, we want a by itself. So how do we unsquare something? You square root. So what you can actually do is change that outside 2 to a 1. And then you can put the whole thing under the square root sign. And then it'll solve it in one step. So the way I would write this question is this way. I would say x equals root sign. 11 squared plus 9 squared minus 2 times 11 times 9 times cos of the angle, 52. 
And I would type it in exactly like that. So I'm going to grab my calculator and do that. So my root sign, 11 squared plus 9 squared minus 2 times 11 times 9 times cos of our angle, 52. Enter. We get 8.94. So we get x equals 8.9. And now that I've got an opposite pair, I can go back to using sine law to find these other angles inside. Okay? So we got 8.9 and we figured that out. So we only have two equations we need to worry about. Okay? That's all cosine law is, two equations. And again, like I said, the minute you find your opposite pair, you solve the rest of the triangle using side law. So let's take a look at a couple examples. Okay, that's what we're going to take a look at this next one. So, it really doesn't matter who the A, B, and C are. What matters is where you're putting them. Okay, so you're going to notice these guys have an A, a B, and a C, and then they put them in different spots. What I want you to know the difference about all this is, literally, if we're finding the side across from the angle, that's what it's showing, baby A and big A, they have to match, right? So they're showing we're finding the side across. That's what we're finding, okay? So we have the taco situation where we've got a side, the angle in between, and another side. Okay, that's the taco. So... Here's our taco like that. This is when we're always going to use the cosine law. So instead of the squared sign, I'm going to put it under the root sign. So under my root sign, I'm going to have 15 squared plus 19 squared minus 2 times both those numbers times cos of the angle 44. All under the root sign. And that's going to give us x. So that's our baby A, the side across from angle A. Baby A, the side across from angle A. And how big do we get there? How big is our side? Make sure you type the numbers in correctly. Thirteen point three is what you should have got. So we're gonna have thirteen point three centimeters. Okay. So did everybody get thirteen point three? Yes. Yeah. Huh? Perfect. All right. On this one, they want us to find the same thing. They got the guy across. Now, are you noticing it doesn't matter who B and C are? B and C are just the other two sides you're given. So those other two sides you're given, you're putting them in four different places. Those two and those two. That's the only four places you're putting them. Because that's the only four places they can go. Does it matter which numbers go first? Nope. I could put the 19 there and 15 there. It doesn't matter to order. Okay? All right. Let's take a look at this one. So how am I going to put the numbers differently? Let's try it like this. All right. So I'm going to use 15 squared plus 21 squared minus 2 times both those numbers times cos of 144. And that's going to give us our x. sure you're getting the same answers, please. Practice typing the numbers in. Okay, practice typing them in. Okay, we only have a couple of examples left. Did everybody get those? Not quite? 
Okay, when you're given a triangle that's been described to you, it has not been drawn. You need to draw a basic triangle. So we're going to draw an acute triangle, which means all angles are less than 90. So just any triangle. And then we're going to label it K, M, N. K to M is 16. K to N is 11. And M, N is 6. It wants an angle M. So it wants that angle right there. All right. Well, it wants angle M right at the top. What we have to do is we have to find its opposite side. Who's its opposite side? 11 is his pair. Well, since 11 is his pair, 11 is the number that's going to be subtracted on the top of the equation. So we say cos of angle M equals bracket the two beside the angle. 16 squared plus 6 squared, then subtract the guy across, 11 squared, all divided by 2 times 16 times 6, 26 there, okay, again, you do need brackets, that's why they're there, so bracket, 16 squared, plus 6 squared, minus 11 squared, Close bracket, divide by, open another bracket. Two times the first two numbers, 16 times 6. Close your bracket. It's going to give you a decimal number. Now you got to go second cos, second answer. Second cos, second answer. 27 exactly. So we're going to get 27 degrees is angle F. Now, if it said solve the rest of the triangle, we have an opposite pair with our 11 now, okay? Because we have 27 degrees. So 27 is up here for angle M, 27 degrees. I'm going to draw another triangle, S-T-U, S-T-U. S to T is 16, S to U is 20, T to U is 6, and it wants angle T to the nearest degree. So whenever you're finding these, again, same as we did in the very first question, what's the first thing we did if we're finding an angle? Find his opposite pair. So finding his opposite pair, because this guy is the one that's going to be subtracted in the equation. So now when we write the equation, we're going to have cos of angle T equals, open a bracket, 16 squared plus 6 squared minus 20 squared all over 2 times 16 times 6. All right. Now, again, that's going to give us a decimal answer. So you're going to have to hit second coast second answer. So how big do you get angle T? He's actually pretty big. He is 124 degrees. So angle T is 124 degrees. So we didn't quite draw him to scale, but that's okay. All right, a couple more examples. And again, whenever they give you a description, you draw a triangle. So the training wall is leaning at an angle of 70 to the horizontal. Okay, we got a retaining wall leaning at 70. Okay. Here's our wall. And it says a rigid support is to be placed 5 meters from the base of the wall, and it's going to be attached 2.5 meters from the base. Determine the length of the support to the nearest tenth of a meter and then measure the angle between the support and the wall. So we want that angle eventually. And it's going to give us, so give us 70 degrees and 5 meters from the base to be attached and 2.5 from its base. 2.5, pardon me. And up here is 5 meters. So, it says, determine the length of the support, 
So this right here is the support. And we want to find out how long it is. So here's our X. And then we want to find this angle after. We're looking for that angle after. So this is a two-part question. So first things first, we have to use the cosine law. Why do I have to use the cosine law? Because there's no opposite pair. So I'm finding a side, so I need to use the square root one. So x equals square root 5 squared plus 2.5 squared minus 2 times both the numbers, 2 times 5 times 2.5 times cos 70. A lot of numbers. Under the root side, 5 squared plus 2.5 squared minus 2 times 5 times 2.5 times cos 7, 4.8. So we get x is 4.8. So now I've got an opposite pair, because I know 4.8 is right here. So now I've got this opposite pair here, and I need to use that number there, the 5, to find the uh, angle right here. So I'm going to go to sine law. So I'm going to have 4.8 over sine 70 equals 5 over sine theta. We don't know what theta is. So we're going to cross multiply this way, divide by 4.8, and then we're going to second sign our answer. So let's grab our calculator. 5 times sine 70. Enter. Divide by 4.8. Enter. Second sign, second answer. 78 degrees. Angle theta is 78 degrees. Now, would I be able to find out that third angle if I know two of them? Yeah, you can just take 180, subtract the bottom until you get the top angle. All right. I'll give you a minute to write that down, and then we'll move on to the next question. Okay, last couple. Three pointed star is made up of an equilateral triangle. So if this is an equilateral triangle, that means that all the angles are 60 on the inside. Okay, so I'm just going to blow this guy up a little bit. So if it's an equilateral triangle. That means this guy is 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees. Okay, that's what it's telling us. Now, and three congruent triangles. These are isosceles. That's what they're telling us. They're isosceles. And it says, determine the perimeter of the equilateral triangle in the three-pointed star. So it wants me to find out how long this is, and then I'm going to times it by three, because I've got three sides. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. So, this guy's our X. Do we have an opposite pair to deal with? No, this guy is no opposite pair, and these guys don't have any angles to be opposite. So that means we're using the cosine law. So we're, you're going to use the one where we use the square root sign. So we're going to call that guy X. Right here. This guy's our X. So we've got X equals... 60 squared plus 60 squared minus 2 times 60 times 60 times cos 20. And that's going to give us our x. That gives us x. Wait, cos what? Cos 20. Now, since these are isosceles, I'm able to find out how big those angles are. Okay, and I'll show you that in a moment. So we could use the sine law if you want to. Yeah. So I'll show you that in a moment. So how big is X? Oh, 
Oh, we're not having much of a consensus here. Twenty point eight. Okay. Yes, it wants the nearest centimeter, so twenty one. So x equals twenty one, and we want the perimeter of this triangle. So the perimeter is going to be sixty three. Sixty three centimeters. How do I get sixty three? Well, because x is twenty one, this guy's twenty one, this guy's twenty one. They just want to know the perimeter of that triangle. That's all they said. Oh, all right. Now, I'm going to show you that I know that these angles are each 80 degrees. How do I know that they're both 80 degrees? Well, first of all, a triangle adds to 180. And if I already know that this one's 20, that means 180 subtract 20 gives me 160. If it's an isosceles triangle where two sides are the same, two angles are the same. So I would take 160 and divide it by 2, and that would give me my 80 and 80. So we could have actually done this by sine law, because you could add sine 80 with a 60 and sine 80 with a 60. You'd still get the same answer, though. All right, let's look at the last ones. These four are for you to solve x. So I'll give you a couple minutes. Push pause now and play when you are ready. Okay, you've got a couple minutes to look at that, so let's take a look at what you got. So you should have used the square root formula here, and you would have got 30.4. On the next one, you would have got 110 degrees. Now, the bottom two, um, number four is a bit easier. Let's do number four real quick first. So number four, you've got opposite pairs to do sine law. So x is going to be equal to 24.5. And again, like I said, you can do sine law. Here, in order to find x, we've got to find angle C first. So using sine law with opposite pairs, you're going to get angle C is equal to 79 degrees. After we do that, we're going to take 180 minus this, uh, 70 and minus 79 to get 31 degrees for angle A. So then we have an opposite pair. So now we're going to use x over sine 31 is equal to 18 over sine 70 and we're going to get x is equal to 12.6 12.6 oh hang on 18 over sine 70. We're not getting 12.6. Let's check our calculator again just to make sure. So, 18 times 18 times sine 70. Oh, sine 31. Divided by sine 70. It's 9.9. 9.9. So we get x is equal to 9.9. This concludes lesson F.